Welcome to the Year 11 Parent Information Presentation for GCSE exams in 2021. We're really sorry that you can't be at school this evening to witness this in person, but we have tried our best with the questions that have been sent in to give you all the answers to those unknowns at this time. The presentation will be in three main sections. In the first section, Mrs Bonser will talk about GCSE assessments and the guidance that the government have given us to enable these to happen. Mr Bonser will then talk about post-16 and what goes on after GCSE results. And Mrs Moyo will be last finishing up with key dates and key information for all students. Hi, I'm Mr Shipman, one of the co-head teachers at Hastings High School. In my section of this presentation, I'm just going to answer a few overarching questions. And I think it's important to start with why does everything feel so last minute? The government has changed its mind several times on how Year 11 students will be assessed this year. The final decision was made that students would be awarded centre assessed grades, where teachers would collate evidence and submit grades to their exam boards. The final guidance for this was published a couple of days before we broke up for the Easter holidays. And throughout the Easter holidays, there has been updates to this guidance that we've been incorporating into this presentation tonight. Most of the awarding bodies for individual subjects have been publishing information. The latest bits of information only came out on Monday. Just as you are, we are very frustrated that this feels so last minute. But we're now trying to give you as many answers as we can and we'll send further updates in the coming days and weeks as we get them. We know the last 12 to 18 months has been really hard for all of the Year 11 students. They've had to cope with learning in school, in small groups, and learning at home through several lockdowns. They have definitely demonstrated all of our Hastings values. They've been a community of learners helping each other. They've demonstrated their ambitious side with their college applications and the work they've produced. And they've been developing responsibility about taking time for their own work and making sure it's of the very highest quality. They've accessed our enriching curriculum and all of them have had a focus on their own self-development. There are a few overarching questions which I'd like to answer at this point. We know that the current 50 day timetable ends with a week and a half to go before half term. Nearly all of our subjects will be finished collecting evidence by this point. But we know that some subjects are short of time because of lessons missed during lockdown. So once the current timetable ends, there will be a short timetable, which makes sure all subjects get the time they need before the students depart. Core PE is another chunk of time that we are able to use for other things. So when the pupils have core PE lessons, we will be offering them out to other staff in other subjects to ensure that any work that needs to be completed is done in time. All subjects are clamouring for as much time as possible. We will over the coming days and weeks be publishing our centre policy, which is a policy we've had to submit to JCQ about how we're going to assess pupils and make sure that everything is as fair as possible. We will also send out the rules that we've been given by both JCQ, Ofqual and the government about how grades are to be awarded, and Mrs Bonser will explain this in more detail in the coming section. Finally, the question that lots of Year 11 students have asked is, will effort count? Well, of course it does. If students are working hard, they're going to give themselves every opportunity to demonstrate how well they can achieve. Our Year 11 students, having been through all that they have in the past 18 months, have six to seven final weeks to really push themselves and show everybody what they can do. We are so proud of the entire year group and we wish them all the success for the future. I'm now going to hand over to Mrs Bonsar who's going to talk about exams assessment and everything to do with that. Hello, I'm Mrs Bonsar and part of my role at Hastings is to ensure that the grading process this summer runs smoothly. I'm going to start by running through a timeline of key dates. We are currently in the assessment window. 
which will be explained in more detail in the next few slides. All teachers will submit their final grades by June the 7th. Following this, there will be a process of internal quality assurance. Grades will be checked by heads of department and then by myself. As part of the guidance from JCQ, we have to compare this year's grades to previous years to check that we are not being too lenient or too harsh. Once these checks have been carried out, Mr Shipman will sign the Head of Centre Declaration and our grades will go to the awarding bodies. They will then carry out spot checks on random schools, which will, we will need to be ready for. Results Day will be on Thursday the 12th of August and more information about this will be sent out later this half term. To help explain the process that we will be going through, I want to show you a short video from AQA, although it is applicable for all other exam boards too. It is aimed at teachers, but does explain the process very well. This spring, we're creating a programme to boost your confidence and guide you towards grading your students. We're starting with this short video to take you through the five steps to putting together your students' range of evidence and deciding grades based on guidance released by JCQ. Step one, consider what you've taught. To start, think about what content you've taught. Have you covered the content in depth or only lightly? You're only assessing students on content you've taught, so keep a note of content you've been unable to cover. Step two, collect the evidence. Next, think about what you can use as evidence of your students' performance over the course of their studies. Evidence should be consistent across your class or cohort. It should reflect your students' performance and, where possible, all the assessment objectives across as much of the spec as you can. Start by identifying gaps in your evidence and, if you do, what work can you use to fill them? To help you, we've put together assessment materials made up of groups of questions and their mark schemes and mapping grids. You'll find these at the link on your screen and beneath this video. We'll also produce other support materials, including training and marked example responses with commentaries. You could use these resources as evidence or to help confirm your decisions. You could also include assessments that you, colleagues, other teachers or publishers have put together, your normal go-to resources. NEA, even if it's incomplete, homework, mock exams or other internal tests you've set, performance records for subjects like music, drama or PE, progress records across the course of their study. Step 3. Evaluate the quality of the evidence. You'll need to make a holistic judgement based on various pieces of evidence for your students. Consider how to balance and weight the different sources. Some key things to think about in this step are How confident are you that it's the student's own work? You'll have more confidence in your judgement if you're confident the work is authentic. What was the level of control? Was it taken in timed conditions? Was there an opportunity for redrafting? Was it supervised? What internal standardisation processes have been applied? More recent evidence is likely to be more representative of students' performance, although there might be exceptions. Step four, establish whether the evidence is appropriate for all students. Check that your evidence matches the taught content. Whilst it's important to use consistent evidence across your students, some may have missed some teaching for valid reasons. If so, consider if there's alternative evidence you can use. Step 5. Assign a grade. Grades should be based on a holistic judgement. You don't need to worry about deciding grades for every part of the spec, only an overall grade for the range of evidence is needed. We're producing guidance on using the grade descriptors, with examples of graded work to help you decide the right grades. You'll find these securely on Centre Services, our EAQA replacement. It's important to remember, performance, not potential. You can only assign a grade based on the evidence you're submitting, not how you think the student should have performed. Lastly, before submitting your grades, complete a quality assurance process, including standardisation, in line with your school or college's policy. JCQ and Ofqual have produced support on these, and again, we've linked to those on our 2021 exam changes pages. You'll also find a link below. 
you're now ready to submit your grades. You'll find the full written guidance, which includes worked examples of each step of the process, at the link at the end of this video. Remember, you've overcome a lot in the past year. You're not doing it alone. And together, we can work towards fair grades for students. As you can see, the exam boards are working hard to support us and we'll be producing more examples and guidance over the next few weeks. Now to get on to the questions that you have been emailing in. A lot of the questions related to the evidence that we might be using and how that's going to be used. So I'm going to cover that in this section. In regards to evidence, JCQ has released guidance which states the different types of evidence we are allowed to use. We will be sending you the full guidance via parent mail shortly if you wish to read it all. But the list includes mocks, NEA or coursework, substantial in-class assessments, records of performance which might be kept in drama, musical PE, and any additional assessment materials being used from the exam boards. Each subject area will be using evidence that is suitable for them. They will share this evidence base with pupils during their upcoming lessons, with most subject areas being able to give more detail during parents' evening tomorrow. When determining a final grade, we will be looking at the evidence holistically. It isn't about grading every piece of work. This isn't possible in many cases but about looking at the evidence as a whole and using the grade descriptors from the exam boards to determine the final grade. Although no one piece of evidence is worth more than another, the assessments taken during this assessment window are likely to hold more weight in determining the final grade. This is because subject areas have finished teaching all they need to and pupils are more prepared, allowing them to show their best work. In most cases, we will be using the autumn mock grades as part of our evidence base. However, depending on the subject area, the grades will be used in different ways. When mocks were sat, I sent out a presentation explaining the difference between a full mock and a partial mock. These are clearly indicated on the mock result report, should you wish to look them up again. For subjects where pupils sat a full mark, their final grade is very unlikely to be lower than this grade. However, for those subjects where the mock was only part of a full GCSE, the final grade could be lower if the remaining work to be assessed is at a harder level. For example, maths sat all three papers even though they hadn't finished the course in autumn. Their final grade is likely to be the same or higher as pupils have now been taught more content and will therefore be able to answer more questions. Geography, however, could only sit one paper in autumn as they hadn't taught any of paper two at that point. Paper two is harder and therefore the final grade could be lower. You also have subjects where coursework wasn't taken into account in mock results as it wasn't completed then. These grades could be lower if the coursework element isn't at the same standard as the written exam. It is also worth noting here that coursework grades are usually higher than a pupil's final grade in years when examinations have taken place. JCQ have stated that we must take this into account when finalising a grade which includes coursework. A grade 6 on a piece of coursework would not necessarily mean that a pupil will achieve a grade 6 overall. On previous reports, you will have seen target grades and predicted grades being given. When we were asked to predict grades for pupils, it was under the assumption that teaching wouldn't be disrupted, courses would be finished and pupils would sit external exams. This is obviously not the case anymore and therefore these predictions may not be the same as the final outcomes. When we look at the evidence we have on each pupil, we will be looking to see what grade that work indicates it is at. The guidance we have received states that we should not be trying to find evidence of a particular grade for a student. We have to let the evidence do the talking. We also can't take into account a pupil's behaviour or attitude to work, just the evidence we have. 
In terms of assessments, there were quite a number of questions in this topic as well. So I'll go run through those now. Each subject area has created a plan of assessments they will be carrying out this half term. This will vary in number and time for each subject. The plan will be shared with you during parents' evening and pupils will be talked through it during their lessons. Most subjects are going to use past papers, which allows us to grade work using official boundaries and using the additional assessment material released from the exam board. The 50 day timetable lends itself perfectly to this situation. In most cases, teachers will be able to revise topics with pupils in the morning and then sit an assessment later in the day. Teachers will also be letting pupils know which days they have assessments in their subject and what topics to revise. This information may be shared during their lesson time, but is more than likely to be posted on Google Classroom. Pupils need to be checking Google Classroom daily to check for any updates. If they are not members of any classes, then they need to make this a priority to sort in the next few days. We will be making sure that any access arrangements are also given to pupils who are entitled to them in all upcoming assessments. Tomorrow at parents evening, you will be given lots more detailed information from individual subject areas. I'd suggest having a notebook and pen handy. The majority of subjects will be able to share with you the evidence they currently have with grades or percentages. These will give you an indication of your child's current grade and may highlight subject areas where extra effort needs to be applied to provide evidence at a higher grade. Some subject areas are in the process of internally moderating their evidence to ensure consistency and fairness across the year group and therefore may not be able to give specific details tomorrow. They will, however, share this information with pupils as soon as it is available. Teachers are not allowed to give a current grade or say what grade they will be awarding in the end. From the evidence provided, you should be able to see the kind of grades your child is currently showing evidence for. I'm now going to pass over to Mr Bonser, who is going to talk about how to get pupils organised at home and also post-16 applications and enrolment. Thank you, Mrs. Bonser. I'm going to talk to you now about two areas. One, how to prepare over the next um, seven weeks and maximise potential. And then I'm going to talk to you about the post-16 applications process. At Hastings, we are fully appreciative that many students' confidence has been knocked due to COVID and the lack of clarity that has resulted in examinations this year. However, students have seven weeks to shine and make the most of the time that's available to them. As Mrs Bontz has already explained, there will be no surprises on results day. We are transparent. We will share with each and every student the data we have on them in terms of assessment data, and we'll be completing additional internal assessments over the next few weeks. Students will be informed by their subject teachers of the dates and times and approximate content of these um, assessments to help students prepare in the best way possible for them. Students need to be really organised and plan for each and every one of these assessments to make the most of the opportunities available to them. We are going to issue each student with a study and assessment timetable on Google Classrooms that will be a blank timetable and on that timetable they, they will need to write all of the dates and times of the assessments that they will need to complete over the coming days and weeks. Therefore, once they have done this, they can plan their revision around these assessments. To help them revise, students have already been provided with an Elevate folder that contains subject spe specifications and specific content to help them with their revision. Students should also have at home revision guides and additional materials. If a student has any concerns relating to a specific subject, please get in touch with their subject teachers. If you've got any other concerns relating to revision, please get in touch with myself or Mrs Moyer. Attendance is going to be crucial over these coming weeks. 
If a student misses a planned assessment, they will need to complete it after the leaving date. It's absolutely essential that we get each and every piece of evidence that we require to help us award the grades that students deserve. When students leave us, if they um, do not have to come back in to complete an assessment, we are expected as a school to set additional work and this will assist in the transition to post-16 study and there will be a variety of um, different materials posted on Google Classrooms after the leaving date to support students. All students at Hastings have applied for a college or sixth form place which will start in September this year. We have encouraged all students to make a choice A and B and apply to two different institutions. This will give, give them a degree of flexibility in the instance they do not get their target grades to get into their first choice uh, destination. The vast majority of interviews for colleges and sixth forms have now taken place. There are one or two colleges who are still conducting interviews. These have taken place either via telephone or online meetings. After you've had your interview, offers will have been made to you. Usually the offer is conditional, which means that you will need certain grades to access the courses you've applied for. Occasionally, an institution may offer an unconditional offer to you, which means you have been accepted on the course. If you've not heard back from the provider you've applied to, please get in touch with them as soon as possible, give them a call, send them an email, just to check that your application hasn't disappeared somewhere. We're also asking students in the next week or so to complete a very brief Google form, which will be posted on Google Classrooms, to indicate uh, the status of their college applications and also the courses they've applied for and the first choice destinations. We do have this information in school already, but it's just a double check that everyone is on the correct pathway. <clears throat> As aforementioned, uh, we are contacting Sixth Forms and Colleges and requesting that they provide bridging work or reading lists to complete to assist in the transition to Sixth Form study. This is particularly useful for students who are going to complete A-level study next year. We'll be posting this material on Google Classrooms along with other materials um, that you can complete after you've finished your time at Hastings. We strongly recommend to students that they complete this bridging work where possible because it is a big jump from GCSE to A level. You will need to enrol with the college that you've applied to and accept their offer if you've got the grades after you collect your results in August. All six forms in colleges have an enrolment window in which you will need to inform them that you intend to go there. This will vary from college to college. Um, the windows differ, so please get in touch with your college and they'll probably be in touch with you to inform you of how to enrol around the time you get your GCSE results. Occasionally, students may not be available to enrol. For instance, occasionally students may be on holiday or for other reasons cannot um, enrol during the specific time frame. If that's the case, six former colleges are very accommodating. Um, please contact them if you've got any concerns or queries and they will be uh, more than happy to assist you. If you've got any uh, questions about what I've discussed, please get in touch with me and we will also ask all students before they leave us at Hastings to join our LinkedIn account, which will then um, enable them to join our alumni network so they can keep in touch with students that they've studied with for the last five years into the future. Good evening. This afternoon we held a number of assemblies to share the following information with your young person. We felt it was important to share it with them first because we promised them back in September that as soon as we knew any information that's what we would do. I'm now going to go through all of the information that I shared with them and hopefully this will help to answer some of the questions you may have had um, and to clarify some of the dates. Parents' Evening is tomorrow, Thursday the 15th of April. This will be an opportunity to speak to each individual subject teacher 
and to answer any queries you may have about those individual subjects. The deadline for ordering a hoodie is this Friday, Friday the 16th of April. Although the letter which went out did only say pupils could choose from four different colours, we have in fact got a range of 56 and pupils have been asked to come and speak to me directly so that I can record this on an order form. We have also got a medium sized hoodie for pupils to measure themselves against so they can make an accurate decision on what size they might need to have. The hoodies will be delivered during the last week that pupils will be with us and the last day of school for your year 11 pupil is Friday the 28th of May. Pupils have been told this date, they are fully aware that they need to keep coming in every day from now until then, that gives them six weeks to shine. Although the pupils last day at school will be Friday the 28th of May, they must be available until the 25th of June in case we need them to come in and complete any missing assessments. This might be caused by sickness or any other reason that they can't come to school. Obviously this is for their own benefit and it would be better if they came in every day so they don't need to worry about coming in during that period. The prom has been booked for Saturday the 26th of June. The reason why we've chosen Saturday this year is to give pupils and staff plenty of time to get ready for the evening so they come and enjoy what will be a fantastic celebration of everything that the Year 11s have gone through um, and to really enjoy ourselves one last time, um, which will be the last time that we're all together. Results Day this year is much earlier. It's on the 12th of August. That will take place in school. Should you be unavailable on the 12th of August, please let the school know as soon as possible so that we can make arrangements for your person to receive their results. I fully, fully appreciate that it's been a very difficult last couple of years for your young person and lots of you will be feeling very wobbly um, and unsure about what's going to happen in the next six weeks and what may happen in the future but please feel rest assured that your young person will receive the same amount of pastoral support and care that they have received in the last five years. If you have any concerns about your young person or wish to get any advice on how best to support them, please feel free to get in touch with myself or Mrs Ashworth, who is our pastoral mentor.